Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome along to the vlog. So at the moment I'm sat outside the Clumber Park Hotel. That's there in the background. And this is the Normanton Gate, which is one of the entrances to Clumber Park. And here in the back, we have, hey boys, Reggie and Chance ready to go on our morning walk. Excuse the poor lighting and contrast on sat in the truck. So this morning I've brought with me um, some little headphones and uh, while we walk the dogs, before we go into work, I'm gonna listen to the Beer and Brewing podcast, episode 237, I think, which is how to get more hop flavor out of your IPAs, which is never a bad thing. So we're going to walk the dogs around uh, a few fields here, probably about three or four miles. Get back in the car, go to work. I have to book some accommodation today for um, Nottingham Beer and Cider Festival. I think is on Saturday the 14th. So I'm going across there, hopefully with Tom and Abby. And we are meeting Andy and his good wife, I believe, Sarah, from Four Priest Brewery. So there's gonna be a gang of us there. Gemma's coming along too. Um, possibly even Martin, if he can make it, Martin Bailey. And uh, I'm sure there'll be lots of other brewers there as well, so I need to book accommodation for that. I need to continue work on the cold rooms that I've been doing. And also Liam, our new chef, is developing the autumn menu and uh, I'll be putting my uh, two penneth worth into that discussion. And then of course there's other things to do as well, like Gemma should be doing a bit of casking today and whatnot. So let's get this walk out of the way and uh, we'll grab some more footage in the brewery. Um, unless anything, unless we spot anything on the walk, uh, we'll cut to the brewery next I guess. We'll probably spot something on the walk though, you know what I'm like. He's just shouted at me. Always something interesting in the morning. There they go. Oh, beautiful. I knew I'd catch something. I don't know if I got that on audio, but he barked. Did you hear like the, the yap kind of bark, really rough and deep. And that was a warning call to his mate to hightail it out of there. That was fantastic. Go on, Reg. <laughs> these cold rooms have fared over the evening so the truth be told 12.2 that's perfect and 9.9 .9, that's good enough for me 
could do with being a bit cooler. This one that's on the old fans at 13.2. So the cellar cooling, which is the big rooms, if you like, that's perfect. The smaller room, which is the um, basically our hop store, that could do with being a little bit colder than it is. But below 10 degrees is fine. So I thought I'd open up and have a look and when I walked in it is really cold in here actually. So the temperature probes here on the wall which is about booby height for me and uh, obviously down here the floor in particular is much much cooler. So I don't think that's giving a 100% accurate reading holistically of the room. You'll have hot spots, you'll have cold spots but the good thing is it's almost as far away from the fan and the cooler as you can actually get. And what I like about this is if you look at it, the matrix has not got any ice on there. You can see through the fins, not very well on the camera, but you trust me, you can see through them. And those fans seem to be doing a pretty good job of keeping all of this area cold. So I've just got one more of these supports to fit in the end cold room and then we'll change out the cable work as well and that's that project put to bed that should save us some cash moving forwards and then i have to work on a few other things so one of these fermenters down here fv3 this needs a new heat pad putting onto it just in there as you can see it should look more like that I need to also tape up these heat pads to tidy up that foam that I've put on there. And then I also want to pull out the pilot kit. Yes, indeedy. Um, I've stolen and harvested parts off of this over the past few months. I want to get it back up and running again because I want to use it for some Christmas beers. So hopefully we can find time to do that today. It's still only 16 minutes past eight and then in this corner I'm gonna to have to pull out the canning machine and the can filler the seamer and the filler I need to get in there and service the coolers for the main fermenters one uh, eight seven and six because I had a rattle on the fan yesterday and I want to make sure that obviously it's nothing too serious and then still we've got to move all of this boxing over here and up there to free up some more space. There's a lot to do. Will I get it all done today? Probably not. Probably not in this video. There's also some stuff to do next door, uh, but fingers crossed we can make a good dent in the work that's required to be done. She's out. It's been a while since we've seen the pilot kit see the light of day. I must admit though, she's uh, rather pretty. And looking at the control panel, look at the big old chunk of space here, look, we could put something in. Um, I had to harvest something, which turns out to be the water meter. So uh, yeah, I installed it over here. So I'm gonna order one. I'm not gonna be using this until next week. So if I get upstairs, and onto eBay quickly. I might get one here for next week and I'll be able to just install it where it came out there. But what do you reckon? Oh, I do love this little bit of kit. So we're gonna get this fired up again and we're gonna make some beers for Christmas. And while I'm at it, I may as well just give everything a quick electrical test. So these are all signal cables. This is the worst part of the old design actually because this is all bundled off onto a terminal block and they all run out to PIDs basically. So we're looking at return signals from the boil kettle probe, the HLT probe, that kind of thing. Um, but it was just easier for me to do that. But other than that, everything looks cushy might put some covers on these. I think I've got a couple of covers um, 
what's it called, in the in the workshop. And everything else looks to be all right. 36 volt power supply there. I think it's 36 volts. Anyway, that runs up to the water meter that's not there anymore. So let's go upstairs and see if we can get eBay on our side. Get a water meter. What are these called? Um, uh, ZJ LCDM. They're actually really good. I can't find a sensor that works with a temperature probe on there. I've got one on the water meet, um, on the HLT as well. I do like them. They're about 30 quid, I think. Everything seems to be working. So we're recirculating the HLT. If you have a look on here, light it up for you. Look at the power, 26 watts. Turn the HLT element on. Up we go to three kilowatts, so uh, that's working perfectly. I'm just gonna turn the HLT pump off, and then we're gonna change the connector here. And we're gonna push, this is caustic by the way. We're gonna push this caustic into the mash tun. All standard, really. That's a heavy lid, let me tell you. So, come back around here, flick the HLT back on again. And we should see all of that liquid transferred into the HLT. Uh, sorry, mash tun. So we'll do that. And then I'm gonna run it through the boil kettle and plate chiller. And then I'm gonna bang some fresh water through. I'm not gonna run sanitizer through because these plate chillers have copper brazing in them and it damages them. But what I'm gonna do is just push all of the caustic out with fresh water and everything this side, I can run some sanitizer through it all, but it doesn't really matter. It just needs cleaning and rinsing. And then this side, we'll use the heat from the boil when we come to make a beer to sanitize all of the equipment so we don't have to, of course, push any acids through that copper brazing, which would ultimately damage it. It's been a while, but it's like riding a bike. It really is crackers how quickly the day gets away with you. I've not managed to move any of this stuff up here. I've not managed to move any of this stuff up here. And I've not managed to move any of this stuff up here. What I have done is pack away a um, labelling machine. I've not got in the corner there to service that glycol chiller yet. And I am planning on maybe getting rid of this cabinet here and opening up some more space there. But what I've done basically is clean out the pilot kit ready to use it next week that's the plan i'm going to tom's this saturday believe it or not we're going to brew another beer we're going to do the coconut shy actually so that's kind of put me in the mood to pull this pilot kit out but i also have to do beers for christmas and if i'm doing 12 of them what i'm trying to do is reduce reduce the amount of stock that we're holding in these three cold rooms because i've got Potentially a couple of tanks coming at some point in the next month or so. Should have been here already. I've paid a deposit on them, some uni tanks, but they're not here yet. So there's a small chance that this whole thing may, may fall through and I don't get them. I'm hoping not. But if they do turn up, I'm thinking I'm going to have to kind of locate them over here in this wall space, which means we would have to find somewhere new for the pilot kit to live. And I just, I don't really know where it's gonna go. We could per perhaps put the pilot kit under the stairs. That means I'll have to find somewhere new for my caustic to live. Uh, yeah, I don't know. See, we kinda need some more space I want to bring the kit this way, but then I'm going to start gobbling up all my acid storage and 
cable work and stuff like that is quite tricky. I'm kind of thinking out loud, but to accommodate these two tanks, which are the two tanks will basically take up the space of these three tanks here. It would be nice if we could have those three tanks on a run, which means I'd have to pull all of this three meters this way, which I just don't think I can do it, quite frankly. I just don't think I've got the room. I suppose one other option is, well, uh, maybe not. I was thinking, do we, do we have more coming out in a row this way, but it doesn't give us enough manoeuvring space. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is we need a bigger brewery, but it would be foolhardy of me in today's current climate to start an expansion when things are so tough. Things are so tough financially. So I'm going to go home and think about this a little bit more. Um, I'm re constantly reorganising to try and find space somewhere. And I can't go up, you know. Uh, I can't go next door because there's somebody in there. All I can do is go that way, but it's awkward going up that way because there's a difference in height on the floor and I don't have a floor drain down there. My floor drain ends here. And if you look where this is, where this access is, there's a difference in height. And you can see it here, because we've kind of got a ramp going up just on that bit there. So ultimately, I don't really want any of my brewing equipment up that end, because I like to have a relatively hygienic floor that I can wash down and rinse. So I'd like these tanks this side. Yeah, and the only thing I can think of is there, but if I put them there, then I'm gonna to have to kind of move these stairs. Yeah, it's not easy. I'm gonna to have to think outside the box, maybe draw some plans and do it that way. Anyway, as I was gonna say two minutes ago, I'll go home and have a think. I'm gonna call it a day today. Uh, because yeah it's five o'clock and uh, it's been a long day for me already uh, 11 hours so far I've been out the house so I'm gonna go and pick up some food for tea and we'll see you on the next video which is probably gonna come in the next few days um, I've delayed releasing the um, operating procedures videos until I've got some more in the pipeline because it just look odd with just one being there so I'm going to do a few more this week, perhaps even tomorrow. So keep liking, keep subscribing, because you want to see them, even if it's just for a laugh. And we'll see you on the next video. Cheers. Well, I suppose I could give you a treat and show you what's for tea. These are vegetarian, not vegan, we've got cheese. Vegetarian shepherd's pies, or cottage pies, about to go in the oven. Hey, tea's ready.